We are back with another AP Daily Practice Session for AP Calculus AB. And we're going to do our third free response question. And this is going to be a differential equation problem, which are really Ooh, cool. Those are my favorite. I, I kind of like them all, but this is definitely my favorite. I'm Verge Cordelius. I teach at Lafayette High School in Oxford, Mississippi. I am Mark Corelli, and I teach at Ryan High School in Denton, Texas. And again, this is AP Calculus AB. So if you're an AB student or a BC student, you are welcome to stay. So we're gonna get right into our STEM here. Um, as we mentioned, as Verge mentioned in video three, the STEM is just the part of the question that you use throughout. And the STEM for this is actually one sentence. It says, consider the differential equation dy dx is 1 20th of x times y plus one cubed. And then there's the slope field sitting underneath the STEM as well. In part A, a slope field for the given differential equation is shown. It says, sketch the solution curve that passes through the point two negative one and sketch the solution curve that passes through the point negative two one. So instead of going straight to the dot cam, I'm actually gonna bring in my little pointer here. And this first one says, we're gonna look at the point at two negative one. So if I start at my origin, two negative one, that is this point, they've marked the dot for me. It says sketch the solution curve. So what I'd really like to do is I'm just gonna follow this. This is a little slope segment if the tangent line exists there. The curve is going to go this way, and it takes me to this tangent line, which takes me to this tangent line, it takes me to this tangent line. And it turns out in this case, I just stay along this line. And it said a solution curve, but you might remember from your algebra classes that a solution curve is just the set of points that solves the equation or makes the equation true. So a line is a solution curve. So I like that line right there for two negative one. And then for the point negative two one, I'm on this little segment. I'm gonna start off to the left here. And I'm gonna kind of use these guys like currents or wind markers, like guidelines. And I'm just gonna try and stay in between them. Kind of like if I drifted off of this tangent line, now maybe I'd come up between these two and things are getting steeper. So kind of have a curve going off that way. And then as I come down here, things are getting shallower. And you'll notice along the y-axis, those are all horizontal. So I'm horizontal and then I'm picking things up and maybe I come back through these symmetrical points and head up that way. And that's what you're gonna to wanna to draw. And this is generally one point for each curve. Uh, the readers are not dramatically, uh, I wanna say over the top on your accuracy. They realize all you have at this point is a pencil and maybe an eraser. Uh, your calculator's put away, you're not allowed to have a straight edge. So, you know, this sketch is decent. And that's what I want to see, just a decent sketch and a line. You do want to go from where you exit the slope field to where you exit. Or if there was an undefined point, I would draw a circle and stop at an undefined point. But in this case, the slope field was defined everywhere. And for part B, let you read that. It says, let f of x be the particular solution to the given differential equation with the initial condition f of negative 2 is 1, which you might notice that is one of the points that was on our slope field. Write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of y equals f of x at x equals negative two, and use your equation to approximate f of negative 1.5. All right, so same problem step. And I've got this f of negative two, I am gonna rewrite them and say, hey, that's the point negative two, one. And I say at x equals negative two, and I wanna approximate f of negative 1.5 with a line tangent. So Verge is tired of this question because we, talk about these problems all the time but what do i need to write the equation of a line verge i'm never tired of these kind of questions you're going to want your slope and you're going to want your point so we have the point negative two one and the slope Ooh. is going to be um found by using that differential equation because that is the formula or the recipe for slope dy dx the slope so, is going to be that dy dx evaluated at negative two one Mm hmm So 1 20th, mm -hmm. 1 20th is being played by 1 20th. X is being played by negative two. And Y is being played by one. Now we've talked several times that you don't have to evaluate and I could leave that as my slope going through the problem. Um, I may do that, I can't. So I'm gonna go ahead and work that out. Uh, one plus one. Two. Two, so this is negative two over 20 times two cubed, which is also known as eight. <laughs> negative 16 over 20 or negative four fifths, if I reduce that. 
Mm -hmm. um, again, you can leave it. If you want to just copy this down every time because you're afraid you might make a mistake, you know, then you might make a mistake copying it. So you kind of have to weigh it, but definitely could leave it as negative 1620s if you're more comfortable with that. Um, so there's my slope. There's my point. Uh, what do you use for your tangent line? Virgie, you use the you, just traditional points. You know format. what I use. Yeah. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Yep. My Y1, again, is one. Mm -hmm. My slope is the negative four fifths I just found. And I'm going to write minus negative two is X plus two. Mm -hmm. So that's my tangent line. And you don't have to box it, but yep. You do not have to box it. Um, I'm boxing it to separate it from, this is the way I write my tangent lines. That I put the Y1 over on the other side. It's tomato, tomato, right? It's, it's just another way to organize things. Uh, the reason I like that though, is that is a function notation because now they've asked me to approximate F of negative 1.5. So and you don't have to put squiggles here. You could put equals. We know you're finding an approximation, but formally it should be an approximation. One minus four fifths, and my x now is negative 1.5 plus two. And I can stop there, right? Not a bad idea. No, not a bad idea at all. Um, <laughs> I believe it does all work down to six tenths. It does. 0.6 is your final answer. Okay. Yeah. This is a half. I get a one minus four tenths, which is six tenths or three fifths. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you're like me and you really want to know what the number is, what's really cool is what happens if you cross stuff out, Verge? What do you mean if you cross stuff out? If you're working free response and you make a mistake and you just cross it out. Oh, then you just, it doesn't get graded. So I can just do that. Yeah. And, those, and then this is my final answer. Mm -hmm. They don't, we, we, they, we, because <laughs> we both read AP exams, yeah. we don't read crossed out work. So you don't have to go to the trouble of erasing it. Just a, if you don't you want it to be read, just You're watching a video. You could have paused me, but so one minus four fifths, negative 1.5 plus two is a perfectly good answer, as is three fifths, six tenths, 0. 0.6, any equivalent value. All right, which brings us to part C, the final part of this problem. So C says find which there's a reason, right? There's a lot to do here. Find mm -hmm. the particular solution y equals f of x to the given differential equation with the initial condition negative two one. So there's, there's that point negative two one again, but this time they actually want me to solve this. So they want me to find out what Y is. So you got any ideas for me? Separate. That down. Yeah, separate. This is called separation of variables. And we have an independent and a dependent variable named X and Y. Um, I'm definitely gonna bring that Y pl plus one cubed. I'm going to divide that over to this side. Um, you could bring it over as y plus one to the negative three. That might actually be easier for doing a, 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 an antiderivative. But, you know, again, this is a little more traditional of the division. Uh, I see this x here. Um, do you like the 120th on the x? Do you care? Um, this problem, I've worked this problem several times, and it's usually if there's a coefficient like that, I usually leave it um, on the right hand side with the independent variable. So I'm going to have to anti differentiate and it's going to become a 140th. I can kind of tell that already. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it matters. You could, you could leave, you can. I think when I did it the first time, I kind of, I'm more comfortable working with just X. So I put the 20 on the other side, but it's doesn't one way six the other. Right? Mm -hmm. I had mentioned I could have done that as Y plus one to the negative third over there. And this is negative two. And so negative one half out front. And there's a plus C there, but one plus C will take care of the entire equation. So I'm gonna save that for the right side. This one I'm going to do a little more in my head. This is 120th times one half. That's that 140th that Virgil alluded to. And then on that plus C, there's a constant on both sides, but if I gather constants, I have a new constant. I call that one C. So at this point, I can start cleaning things up, start solving for Y. Uh, personally, I want to know what this C is. So 
Um, I know we're not allowed to use multicolor pens on the test, but for some clarity here, I'm gonna bring in my negative two one. I'm gonna plug one in for Y and negative two in for X. Let's say they're one fortieth squared. Mm -hmm. So one plus one, that's two. Uh, two squared is four. The negative means we're dividing. Negative two squared is four. Four over 40 is one tenth. Mm -hmm. well, I think I should have kept it as 40th in hindsight. Negative half times one fourth is negative one eighth. I get that one tenth plus C. And you can tell I really had to concentrate because I stopped talking for a second. <laughs> um, if I get a common denominator, um, this is five fortieths. I'm going to subtract that over as four fortieths. So C is negative nine over 40. And I'm going to scoot over now. And I know you can't see the original problem anymore, but I think it's more important for me to have some real estate. So. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to start rewriting some stuff. I've got negative one over two times y plus one squared equals, that was one fortieth, x squared minus nine fortieths. That look good? Yeah, looks great. Um, at this point, your own work might just split a lot from mine. Uh, my work might look different than Verge's. There's a lot of ways to start isolating that Y. So I'm going to go the ways that make sense to me. Um, but realize that the readers actually have a list of equivalent correct answers at the end. So if you manipulate your fractions a little different, as long as everything's done with good algebra, we're okay. And I might also say that your work um, in the in-between might have even looked a little different. I don't know. I mean, very true. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's a lot of equivalent answers that look very different here. So you can always ask your teacher if you had got, done it correctly, if you did it before we start going over it. And if you, like, yeah, and there's just, there's so many things, right? Like if you did your C, if you solve for C later, after you've done some moving around, your C might look a little different. But, mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm actually going to flip the whole thing. I'm going to reciprocate both sides. Mm -hmm. Call this negative 2y plus 1 squared. And call this side 40 over x squared minus 9. I'm going to divide by negative 2. So it's going to be negative 20 over x squared minus 9. I think the first time I did this, I actually divided that whole right side by negative 1 to get 20 over nine minus X squared. I don't think I'm gonna do that this time. I think I'm gonna leave it like this. Mm -hmm. It just seems more natural at this point. Uh, when I get rid of that square, what do I have to consider when I when I do this, Verge? Well, when you take the square root of both sides, you're gonna get that side. plus or minus. So, so that yeah, algebraic. Plus or minus. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna leave it for now. That happens with absolute value as well. Yes, yeah, so if you have, a, especially if you have a natural log, and that's normally has an absolute value inside it that has to be considered. So they asked for a function. I think you need a square root. I do. Mm -hmm. They asked for a function, and we don't have a function right now. Nope. Because that plus or minus means I have two y's for each of these x's. So I'm going to come back with my point negative 2, 1. And this one I'm just going to do a little more mentally. What's negative 2 squared, Verge? 4. And 4 minus 9. Uh, negative on. five. That's okay. So four wait a minute. Four, I was thinking negative four, but I'm having a moment. So it should be negative five in the denominator. Yeah. Yep. So negative twenty divided by negative four is sorry, going. Two, negative five is four. Yeah. Square root of four is two. I need this to be a positive one. I need that to be plus two there. So that's really what I'm going for. Is do I need this? I need that positive coming out of this. So this has to be negative one plus the square root of negative 20 over x squared minus nine. Mm -hmm. Check your input That's, output I'm, when you have that. I'm plus not going to box it this time because we've said I don't have to box the answers. Again, you might have 20 over nine minus x squared. Um, you might even have a complex fraction in there, depending on how Very you, complex. How you organize yeah, <laughs> that's fine. But that Can is a perfectly good function. If I plug negative two in, I do get one back. And it has that derivative. So I'm pretty happy with that.
So remember when you're sketching slope fields and, and solutions, make sure to use points given on the graph. So Virg had mentioned the other style where they give you some points and you, you draw those slope field segments, make sure you use the points they give you. Yeah, sometimes you look at something like that slope field and if you haven't covered it in class, it seems like, oh, if I can't do part A, I can't do anything. If it feels awkward, just read all the parts. The way the committee designs these is that they, uh, you can enter on any part, A, B, C, or D. Sometimes actually C or D is an easier part um, or you've just had more practice with it, so it seems easier. So read the whole thing. Yes, definitely, keep reading. Don't give up on a problem. Make sure you take your time, show any support for your work. So I can, my, my tangent line, I wanna show where my slope came from. Use the information you were given. Sometimes the stems are longer, or shorter. They're giving you information in those stems. And if you don't know what to do, keep your pencil moving. Like Verge said, take a derivative, do an integral, do the stuff you know, right? Yep. All right. Well, thank you for a good first week. Yeah. This has been a great four sessions, and we've got um, four more sessions planned for you for next week. So come on back. Bye, Verge. Bye.